now the next thing while we wait for the domain name to become active is I'm gonna show you how to make free logos how to make your own logo it's gonna be a simple logo nothing fancy but like it's you know you don't have to pay anybody to make you a logo now guys I've also I'm also making my own website right now that I use that I'm gonna be using as a, it's gonna be a resource pretty much creating a resource with tutorials and all kinds of explanations and I'm gonna be adding more videos that I hope will help you in your website building process so go to my website and like here I've actually outlined steps on how to make a free website but like I said uh, for making a free website is not a good idea um, I'm gonna have to change this later um, I have all these things right here I have themes you can click on themes you can look for other themes but like I said I've already gone through a bunch of themes and the theme I'm gonna show you how to use is the best one by far or one of the best images you can click on images and I have like a little resource a resource here where you can get free images right here you can get stock images these are actually paid but they have some really really nice images uh, free logo maker and you have a free image editor so let's click on logomaker.com or if you don't want to go to my website and you can go straight to logomaker.com the way you spell maker is m-a-k-r without the e so once we're at logo maker we can make a logo so you can click on the search button and you have all these different icons which you can use in your logo right so I've already found an icon that I like and I'm just gonna search for it right now it's called compass and it's this guy right here I'm gonna click on that now the website that I'm gonna be building is uh, hosted on a domain name called wpthemehelper.com so I'm just gonna use that as my logo so I'm going to click on text and I'm going to type in WP theme helper. And I'm going to make this 35 pixels in height. 35 pixels in height. I'm going to make this 35 pixels in height. I put them beside each other like this. You can use the arrow keys to move them around. And the dimensions of this logo are set right here. So I want I want 254 pixels by 50 pixels. When you type in numbers in this little screen, it works a little bit weird. So just play around. And I'm just gonna move this to the center. this a little bit closer and that's gonna be my logo now like I said you can use any icon that you want so I like I like the blue color so I'm gonna make this blue like that and for the logo we're actually gonna make a couple logos we're gonna make a logo that's a standard logo and then we're gonna make another logo it's gonna that's just a different color and the reason we need a logo that's um, a different color is for the transparent header section and I'm gonna sh uh, you're gonna see what I mean in a second so let's save this logo there's a pop-up that tells you that you should leave a credit on your website to this website like a little link on some page saying that you've gotten a free logo from them so if you want to do that just create like a you can create a dummy page on your website saying uh, that's called credits and you can add like a credit to the site if you want or I mean they're telling you you should which you should but <clears throat> you can you, you don't have to do it on your front page you can just do it on a, on a separate page like a credits page or something like that okay so we got one version of the logo the second version of the logo I'm gonna make is white like this and I'm gonna save that and another thing that we need we're gonna need an icon called favicon which is one of these icons right here if you look at the tabs 
at the top see this little icon that's in the corner that's called a favicon and the way you create that is you just gotta make a small picture um, I'm gonna make it 32 by 32 See, this thing only lets you type in two characters, so you have to use the delete button. So if I make, want to make it 32, I have to push 3, then I have to delete the 0, then I have to push 2. It's a little weird, but whatever, it's free. So we're going to delete the text, and then I'm going to take that image that's hidden in the background right now, and I'm going to move it. You can use your arrow keys to move the image, and just line it up. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so it fits. And that's going to be our little favicon. So you save that. And you can go to your downloads folder. And depending on which browser you're, you're using, it could be different. Um, I found out that if you, hold, if you press Control J in your browser, it goes to your downloads folder. And that's where you, you've just saved all these images, right? So go to these images, uh, put them all in one place, make a folder for your website, organize your images, you know, just so you're organized. It will make your life easier when you're building a website. I've already done this. I've already saved my, my images and I've moved them over to the right place. So I'm not going to do it again. And I'm going to exit this. Um, another thing I'm going to show you is a website called Unsplash. So I'm gonna, we're going to go to unsplash.com. And this is where you can get a free images for your website. right? There are tons and tons of free images that you can download and use in your website if you want. So you can click this button right here and make them smaller. right? Like this one's cool. You click on it. Then you can go to download. And then you can right click and save image. And then just save it wherever you want to. Now, I've gone through this website and I've saved a bunch of images for myself that I'm going to be using in my examples for my blogs and the portfolio. So, yeah, just go through this if you like. If you want if you need free images, this is where you can get them. If you want professional images, like you you can you can search for an image here, like let's say car, and you know, it will find you some cars. But let's say you want to look for like dentist. You're not going to get much. Or you want to put in lawyer nothing like that so in order to get those images um, <clears throat> it's very it's very hard to find those kind of images for free so there are two places you can go to you can go to shutter shutterstock or you can go to iPhoto right here and here you can get whatever you want you can you know you can search for a dentist click enter and you have like all these pictures a ton of pictures that you can use in your website. The only problem with these two, with Shutterstock and iStock, they're pretty expensive. Some of these images are like five bucks, ten bucks. Some of them, you can even go as far as like twenty bucks. Sometimes I've seen. But you can get a, you can get a subscription plan, and you can save on images that way. So you can pay like a flat fee, and get like a bunch of images that you can download every month but in this lesson we're just going to be using this website here unsplash.com for our images now one thing about images is you want to resize sometimes like this image right here is huge if you download this image it's probably going to be like five megabytes or three megabytes which is unacceptable so what you want to do is you want to resize them and a really good free tool for resizing images is pixlr so pixlr.com it's just like photoshop you can edit images and they let you use a free version of it so you can scroll down and launch the web app 
let it load okay so here you can open images from your computer or you can open them directly from the URL so if you click on your computer you'll, you know your folders will open up and you can select an image that you want or if you want to open it directly from a URL go to a photo that you liked go to the link right here copy it go back to Pixlr remove this portion in the front click paste control V and let it load the image here you can do whatever you want to the image but for for this tutorial all I want to do is I want to resize them because the originals are too big so I go to image size and see how big this is this is 4,000 pixels in width that's huge the biggest size I ever use on my websites is 1500 so make sure the con constraint proportions is checked this way when you change the width the height will change automatically and type in 1500 then click OK it's gotten much smaller you can zoom in right here and then we're gonna go and save this under the quality um, I would recommend using 75 and under 75 is pretty good for quality you can't really see the difference your eye can't really see the difference sometimes I even use lower but oh, like the main thing look at the image size right here try to make the image size under 200 kilobytes S around 150 is good 170 180 is fine but try not to make it more than 200 otherwise your website is going to be it's just going to take a long time to load big images there's no point you can't see the difference with your eye anyways why make huge images so then you click ok and then you can save it so save a bunch of pictures for your website if you want go through this save the ones you like and maybe even write some content while we wait for the domain name to become active. A good idea, one thing I always like to do, and I mean, this is how you build websites, is you build a website and you build your content. So make sure you have your content somewhere saved in a safe place, like in a Word document or Google Docs or whatever. Save your images, make your content ready to go. So it becomes a cut and paste process right you don't want to waste you don't want to you don't want to write your content in the website itself because what if your website crashes or you or you gets hacked or you lose it so you want your content saved on your hard drive on your computer somewhere in a safe place where you can always rebuild your website if you have to if something bad happens or something crashes because you know it's computers things go bad things crash like it might happen it might not but it might so always save your content back it up somewhere have it ready to go okay so I haven't really time how much time has passed but go go back to your website and see if it's active yet and if it's active we can continue and if it's not then you know wait another maybe 10 minutes 10 15 minutes like I said in total it shouldn't take you more than tw it shouldn't take more than 20 30 minutes to for your domain name to become active so be patient once your domain name is active, we're going to log into your website.